Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to try and discern what is going on with Carvana stock. Of course, if you look at the year-to-date price chart here, the stock is down a whopping 97.88% so far in 2022. It's lost almost all of its value here in 2022. So what's been going on that's causing this significant decrease in value from a stock that you know just last year was doing relatively well so uh to try and answer that i've i've you know gone through its most recent quarterly letter to shareholders and i've highlighted a few factors that's um what's causing investors to be troubled and this has been ongoing and so for, um you know first of all the used car industry experienced a major ups and downs in this last couple of years. Prices soared right after the onset of the pandemic as users with flush with stimulus checks and a, a slowdown in new car inventory rushed to buy used cars and that caused prices to increase. And of course, Carvana doesn't only sell used cars, but it also buys used cars. And so it was paying top dollar for used cars because the industry was so elevated. And now that the industry is kind of slowing down, it's reversed. Carvana is stuck with all of this inventory at higher prices and that's what's causing these headwinds. So let's take a look here. Um, so the good news is that they were able to reduce 90 million in operating expenses. That's good news to slow down some of these losses. But since the end of the third quarter, they've seen additional industry and economic headwinds that further pressure sales volume, which are likely to put pressure on GPU, which means gross profit per unit. To manage the business through this period, we're seeking to rapidly decrease expenses while optimizing for volume flexibility to be able to adjust the business to changes in unit sales as quickly as possible. So management is responding to the urgency of the situation. Thankfully, they're reducing expenses and doing everything they can to prepare for a more significant slowdown in the business. All right, here's a summary of the third quarter results and you see retail units sold totaled 102,570, a decrease of 8%. So units sold are decreasing. And at the same time, the total gross profit per unit is decreasing. It was $3,500 in the most recent quarter, which was a decrease of $1,172, a roughly 20-25% decrease in gross profit per unit to go along with the decrease in the unit sold. And recall earlier above what I sh what management said that since the end of the third quarter, things have gotten even worse, even worse than what they show here. So maybe a percentage year over year decrease even more than 8% and a gross profit per unit decrease even more than this 20-25%. Moving on to its financial statements, I have here pulled up its third quarter balance sheet. And as of September 30th, you could see here cash and cash equivalents. They had 316 million. This was down from 403 million from December of 2021. And they had vehicle inventory of 2.2 uh, 2,500 or 2.5, 2.6 million. This was up from, um, this was down from the 3.1 million uh, or 3.1 billion they showed in the same quarter. Um, well, not the same quarter, but in December of 2021. But more troubling here is the long-term debt, excluding the current portion, which more than doubled to 6.6 billion dollars and you know if you look at the cash only 300 million in cash yes they have 2.5 billion in vehicle inventory but who knows how quickly they're going to be able to sell that and turn it into cash if they need to uh, to help pay down some of this debt and the debt has become troublesome as I will note here now looking at the income statement here sales retail sales have fallen from 2.65 billion to 2.49 billion. Meanwhile, the cost of sales have increased, right, to 3 billion from 2.9 billion in the most recent quarter. If you look at the most recent nine months, 
the cost of sales has actually gone up way more than that to 9.7 billion up from 7.6 billion and the gross profit is um, fell dramatically also from 523 million last year to 359 million this year and again even worse when you look at the nine months down from 1.4 billion to just 1 billion 50 million and here's where the interest expense and the, all that long-term debt is showing its its ugly head here is if you look at the interest expense they paid 153 million of interest expenses that was almost 50 percent of its gross profit in just interest expenses that's a lot and especially when you consider that revenue is falling and gross profit is falling meanwhile interest expense is not falling interest expense is rising dramatically it nearly tripled year over year more than tripled year over year and so this is not a healthy trend this is what's causing all of these concerns about Carvana and all of this talk about a potential restructuring or a potential bankruptcy because it may not earn enough gross profit or it may not earn enough in cash flow from operations to pay down its interest expenses and so it may need to default on some of its interest payments unless it can negotiate a restructuring with its with its lenders and so this is troubling um, another way they can raise capital is by issuing common stock which they've, they've already done you see here weighted average number of shares outstanding 105,000 compared to 84,000 so an increase of 25% in shares outstanding and especially when you consider the stock price is down 98% it may not be an opportune time to raise capital through stock sales and so um, it's kind of backed into a corner here and you can understand why Carvana stock is down so much it's got some major headwinds uh, car sales are used car sales are falling the gross profit per sale is falling the price per car is falling now as new car production is ramping up some of the supply chain um, uh, shortages are easing and so new cars are being able to be produced at normal rates and so used car prices are coming back down to reality this is all bad news for Carvana so investors need to be concerned here about its liquidity position about the slowing sales and about the company's near-term prospects of course longer term the company does have you know a strong tailwind behind it you know it offers significant convenience to the used car buying and selling process customers have shown a liking to what Carvana offers and so if it can make it through this near-term troubles correct its liquidity position Carvana may have a long and prosperous future ahead of it however these near-term troubles need to be solved before it can reach those long-term goals all right so that's all I've got for this video thank you for watching and I will see you next time I want to thank the Motley Fool for sponsoring this video visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now